Um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to Australia in a couple of weeks. Been invited to speak at a conference. Excellent. Very excited about that. Looking forward to it. Be finalising the travel plans. Um, yeah, hotels and trains and planes and stuff. But it's the uh, oh man, the plane. Uh, Twenty-one hours of flying, two flights, but being stuck on us in a thing with lots of other people and I can't get out and I've got no control <laughs> I'm an endurance athlete I should be good at this sort of thing but those things are like I choose to inflict them on myself this is ooh I just don't like yeah okay so I'm getting pretty nervous about the flight um, I, you know I'm not a good traveller anyway I love being places I'm a grumpy traveller yeah you got any tips you got any tips Play games, watch films, but like 21 hours though, on a plane with all those people crammed in, tiny seat, deep vein thrombosis. Don't want to do it, but, but I like traveling. It'll be fine. I know, I'm being unnecessarily melodramatic and I do I do complain at times that nothing makes me nervous anymore. So I'm not I'm not nervous about the talk, I'm not nervous about the people, I'm not nervous about doing all it's just the flight I can honestly I can feel it down here. Um because we're getting closer to it. Uh I used to I used to race internationally tri well that sounds fancy, doesn't it? I used to race abroad, triathlon. So that was worse because you'd have to take your bike and all your stuff and get to the start line and make sure you had everything. And everything had to be perfect because you wanted to, you know, do as well as you could in this race. Anyway, I always remember talking to one of uh, the proper pro triathletes and I asked her how she coped with all of this. And she said, just have a paper book and just let it all go on around you. You'll get there. It's just a lot of waiting. I don't carry a paper book when I'm traveling anymore. I, I try to I try not to carry too much stuff. Maybe. <laughs> My stomach just rumbled. Did you hear that? <laughs> <coughs> uh, sympathetic innovation. It's great. Anyway, okay, different topic. Uh, 3D anatomy video stuff. How's that going? Check out my fancy uh, phone clamp for making 3D videos. Look at that Manfrotto, the best Manfrotto plastic. So, yeah, I've been... <laughs> it looks so tiny. I have been um, taking some... Um, there are things with 3D video like you have to work out how close you can get so the 3D effect isn't too strong but you're close enough so that you can see what you want to see. So I've been playing with that distances. Um, the light is fine, gives you the shadows and the shapes but because it's 3D you see the shapes naturally with your two eyes and your brain which is great. I was worried that if I showed a model to this, it would be too small, but actually when you look at it back on a VR headset, because the, the screen in the VR headset, you won't get a size of the, a sense of the scale but the way you're looking at it now. But once you've got the headset on, it's a huge screen. So yeah, you see, you see uh, the model's really, really big. You can see stuff really nicely and easily. It's really good. Um, it does look a little bit iPhone-y. It's only 1080p. That's okay. I think the image that it gives is, is nice. It's, um, it's, it's kind of a natural 3D, not an overemphasized 3D. It's not flat objects placed at a different distance to one another. It's just got, it just looks more natural, which is what you want for teaching anatomy, right? Um, now Apple, you know, of course they brand everything. So we've got Apple Vision, no, Apple, Apple Spatial Videos for the Vision Pro headset. What they're using is they're using an HEVC uh, MV codec, is that right? They're using a, a certain 3D video codec. It's a good codec. They've made a good decision. It seems to work very, very well. YouTube doesn't support that codec. So if I wanted to take that video and put it on YouTube, there's going to be a whole bunch of, um, well, not editing, but uh, converting the video into different format, wrapping it in metadata to get it to work. 
Um, there is a YouTube app for the Meta Quest headset, which does 3D video and 180 and all sorts. Don't know if there is for the Vision Pro headset. I haven't tried editing yet. I'm thinking I might go back to the way I made videos when I first started, which often was with a mobile phone propped up against a uh, pile of books. Doing a bit better than that now. Um, but maybe, maybe the 3D format is for showing things like the coronary arteries, um, the arteries around the stomach, the blood vessels of the pancreas and the spleen. Do you know what I mean? Showing some detail, showing some shapes, picking particular topics that the 3D-ness of it really helps. Maybe, you know, ha okay, you know, the more you think about it, there's a circle of Willis, there's lots of anatomy applicable to that, but maybe like, you know, a five minute video or a 10 minute video done in one take so that I'm not getting closer and further away and making your brain go a bit way, you know, as, uh, with the stereo effect. Um, Vimeo, they also host videos online. Um, they are supporting the MVHEVC codec and they've made an app for the Apple Vision Pro headset. I haven't got an Apple Vision Pro headset, but they're streamlining the process. So I could just record a video, trim the edges off, sort out the audio, upload it, bam, and it's shared. That's what we want. That's what I started using YouTube for because it made everything easier. Vimeo, Vimeo's, Vimeo's a paid thing, so instead of uh, earning money from YouTube, you would be paying Vimeo to host your videos and stuff, which is fine. If Vimeo make an app for the MetaQuest headsets, then I think that's my workflow. I think, then I think I've found out what I'm doing. Of course, very few people have MetaQuest well, I say very few, very few anatomy students, very few medical students have, people who want to learn anatomy, not very many of them have uh, VR headsets, but hey, I talked about this before, what comes first, the chicken or the egg? If I create the videos, that makes it worth owning a device where you can watch 3D anatomy videos, right? Anyway, worth a go, that's all we ever do is try. What do you think? Is this a 3D thing something interesting? Do you think it would make learning easier for you? Can you imagine like a different version of you, somebody in your position, but in five years time where maybe 3D displays are more widely available in glasses and VR headsets? Do you think the whole 3D anatomy thing is a thing worth pursuing? Or are the resources you've got now just fine and you don't need any of this 3D rubbish? Oh, let me know. Um, I always play with new tools to see what happens. I mean, that's how we ended up here, right? You and me, me playing with technology, right? Just a bit of an update vlog, really. It is, there's very much a sense of uh, wait and watch and see what happens, because obviously it would be a lot easier for me just to keep everything on YouTube in one place. So maybe YouTube will adopt the MVHEVC codec and I'll be able to, able to upload spatial videos directly to YouTube. That would be the best for everything. Um, the other advantage, I, I believe, of the MVHEVC 3D video is that you record it in 3D, but it's very easy for anybody just to watch in 2D. So it would work as a normal video for everybody and then work as a 3D video if you've got 3D. Um, the other 3D formats are a bit clunkier. Anyway, we'll wait and see what YouTube does, right? There wasn't an official YouTube player for the Apple Vision Pro headset. I think they are making one, I don't know if it's out yet, but there is one for the MetaQuest headset. Right, um, yeah, okay. Watch this space.